I've had a lot of smartphones, and to be honest, most of them look and feel somewhat the same. Sure, smartphones have gotten bigger and more advanced over the years, but the general design and shape hasn't really changed that much since iPhone. But what could it look like if we kept everything we like about today's easy to carry phones, but also radically advanced its design? I spoke to experts about cutting edge screen, battery, and camera tech that could completely change the way we interact with our smartphone. Don't do this at home. Do not cut open a charge with the mine battery and stick it in water. Finally, had an engineer use AI to help design the perfect phone. I'm definitely naming this phone after myself. What could ultimately replace the smartphone? Maybe it's glasses you wear on your face, a tiny computer that fits in a contact lens, or even a brain implant. These are all interesting for different reasons, but I wondered what it would be like to go beyond the limitations of today's devices with a phone that was still a phone. Which brings me here to Columbia University's Electrochemical Energy Center. Why don't batteries in smartphones last longer? It's a hard question because batteries have gotten a lot better in smartphones, but it seems like batteries are, uh, the talk time is decreasing. It's actually because the phone's just doing so much more. <laughs> and so the battery is struggling to keep up with it. Professor Dan Steingart and his team of graduate students have been studying and developing new methods of energy storage for years. Dan said one of the first things researchers try to figure out is how to get batteries to last longer. Currently, most smartphones use something like this, a lithium ion battery. Right now, the lithium sits in, in graphite, you know, standard carbon. There's a new material entering uh, the, the, the landscape, silicon. It's not new to viewers probably, but it's new to batteries. You can fit about 22 lithium per five silicon atoms. Dan says that's 10 times the amount of lithium in the same amount of space, which means a battery can store more energy without increasing in size. This is going to be a big change because it's going to increase both talk time by 30%, but also EV range by 30%. More energy efficient batteries are one thing, but teams at Columbia have also worked on creating batteries that are flexible and able to be bent. That's something that you could need if you wanted a thinner phone or something that was more flexible than today's foldables. Folding phone is still stiff because there's still two batteries that are stiff around a really cool flexible display and that need hinge. If the battery was flexible, you wouldn't need that hinge in the same way and wouldn't have to fold in quite the same way. Imagine the possibilities if we pair that flexible battery with a stretchable screen capable of fixing itself. Well, that research is already underway. So you can imagine any form factor, essentially, with a stretchable electronic device. For more than 20 years, Janan has been working on plastic materials that can conduct electricity. So what we are trying to do is to make the future electronics to be soft and stretchy and potentially can heal themselves and could also be biodegradable. Janan's team has invented a number of these stretchy materials that could be used in a variety of applications, from stretchable sensors to stretchable LED displays, with a key benefit being that it could self-repair. Electrical polymers would be able to sense when chemical bonds are broken and then heal themselves. How do you make this sort of stretchable material? So that's uh, uh, by chemistry. As chemists, I think about first, what molecules we should design and the make, and then how we can control the way these molecules will assemble into nanostructures or even larger structures to control their electronic properties and mechanical properties. Other researchers and companies have worked on stretchable displays too. That includes one of the world's largest display makers, Samsung. Currently, Jinin screens are able to stretch to double their size, but the tech is still in its infancy. For now, it can only display low resolution images. But imagine being able to bend and stretch your device into whatever shape you want. What if it could be half as thick as today's smartphones? But that creates another problem. What do you do about the camera bump? So if you look at lenses, they, they really haven't changed much going all the way back to Galileo's telescope in the 1600s. They are these molded and shaped and curved bulky things that go into a camera in order to make up an image. Rob says MetaLens, a camera tech startup, offers two innovations, much smaller lenses and smaller sensors compared to what's available now. 
If you were to take one of our metasurface lenses and you were to look at it with a microscope, what you would see are tiny structures called nanopillars. Each one is much smaller than the width of a human hair. You would find tens of millions of these making up one of our single lenses. MetaLens is able to manipulate light in highly specific ways by controlling the size, shape, and distribution of these microscopic structures. It can reduce form factor and it can take your six lenses and turn it into one or two maybe. Talking to all these experts wasn't enough. I wanted to see what a phone with all these characteristics might look like in one device. Which is why I went to the hardware design studio Tomorrow Lab. It has worked with brands like Google and P&G. We use the disciplines of industrial design and mechanical engineering and electrical engineering combined to translate someone's idea into a prototype and eventually into manufacturing. We only had a couple of hours at Tomorrow Lab, so Ted was limited with what he could do. I explained what I learned about silicon batteries, stretchable electronics, and innovative camera technologies. And we'll first start with illustrating on the iPad. So, you know, here, um, this is in its rolled up form. It's mm -hmm. sort of like a, I don't know, <laughs> like something you'd grip in your hand, like a rechargeable battery or something. Yeah. Um, with maybe, you know, that's a camera lens or a button and some indicators. And then when you need the display to show up, you press a button and it would sort of roll out or you could pull it out. So what we're doing now is we're taking the line sketch of what future phone could look like and then having AI work the magic on it, right? Bingo. So even though we fed it in this drawing, we need to still give it a prompt. We used AI software to generate images of a device with a super thin, flexible screen, multiple cameras with, of course, no bump. Weirdly, even though it's not the thinnest thing ever, there's something really satisfying about the way this looks. What about super thin and retractable and flexible? We kept at it until we arrived at something like this. A flexible, stretchable smartphone with multiple flat camera lenses. Do I want this weird, stretchy, flexy smartphone? Sure, why not? Do I think it's actually going to happen? Probably not, and there's no way of knowing what this thing would cost. But if this phone does get made someday, remember you saw it here first.